Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I am the digital empress, fave informant in the cybersecurity field. And you should definitely subscribe if you want to keep learning more about the field of cybersecurity, how you can break in, tips and tricks, knowledge, and all of that shebang. So we are now on episode four of the Cyber Introduction series. So if you have missed the first three episodes of this series and you just kind of came across this one randomly this is basically a mini series on everything you should typically know before getting in the cybersecurity field and securing a role as like a security professional so this is the book that i read and that i'm like still going through and like reviewing and studying because I had to type up scripts for this video and the rest of the video was in this series. You can find a PDF copy of this in my description box if you wanna read it and take a look at it. There's also an Amazon link to something similar to this and more in depth. You don't, they don't really have this on Amazon but you can go to the Palo Alto site and get this and learn more about their company and what they do but you can find a free version of this in the description box and in the blog post associated with this video. We're gonna basically be discussing the next generation firewall, the future firewall that's going to be the ultimate first line of defense when protecting ourselves and organizations against advanced persistent threats or advanced malware. So if you don't know, firewall basically analyzes traffic and it does this based on like the different types of ports or protocols that are assigned to different, different services on the everyday internet that we use. It also does application analysis, decryption, decoding, and heuristics. What we're trying to get for the next generation firewall is to be able to analyze unknown traffic. This is to better help us analyze and pinpoint when you know advanced malware has made it into the company because like we discussed in the previous videos, um, advanced malware does a very good job of hiding itself on the network with unrecognizable and unknown ports or hiding itself on known ports or ports that we usually consider to be safe and approved. So here are some of the key characteristics that we want to look forward to when implementing the next generation or more evolved firewall. Provides fully integrated approach to threat prevention in a unified context, application identity, malware and exploit detection, intrusion prevention, URL filtering, file type controls, and content inspection. This book was written in 2016, so there may be many firewalls that have been created with all of these features since then. Cybersecurity moves very fast, so a lot of the stuff that I talked about in this book or I talk about in this mini series may be things of the past but overall as far as like malware how the cyber attack life cycle goes and what we're looking for as far as advancing our cybersecurity solutions that's going to be a baseline of what we're going to be thinking about from today and to the future but that's like mostly what we're looking for in a firewall these days like we said cyber criminals love to cover their tracks and not get caught by hiding themselves on the network, right? They do this through obfuscation. So we need the firewall to detect when cyber criminals are hiding themselves on the network. So how can we prevent attacks with next generation firewalls with the characteristics that we named before? Well, you want to enforce positive control. This is to allow only specific traffic into the network and out of the network and you want to kind of refrain from trying to block everything um you'll we'll talk about this more later in the series it's easier to control what you want going in and out of the network rather than just trying to block everything because it's very time consuming and that can cause a lot of restrictions for the users in the organization well, an example of this if you wanted to allow telnets 
to be able to be authorized on the network you would enable port 23 which is the tcp port remember when i told y'all in the cybersecurity questions video that you're gonna need to know your ports this is why because you're gonna have to be enabling and disabling different port numbers and stuff like that on the firewall on your network so you know what traffic is going in and out so know your ports <laughs> as an it professional you're gonna have to always be meeting with upper management with other departments to discuss applications that should be used that shouldn't be used and the type of policies needed to be able to regulate the applications that they're using so they don't go and enable some feature in the application that's not supposed to be enabled. And that could be something that makes the network vulnerable to getting malware. So when you're meeting up with the different departments and establish what applications that should be approved, here's some questions that you can ask, you know, when you go into the meetings and you wanna, you know, you know, you wanna get down to business, this is what you wanna consider, okay? What apps and protocols are in use on the network, on endpoints, and in the cloud? Now, when you go in, you're probably gonna have to, you know, talk in layman's terms to people that are non-technical. So you would have to, for protocols, you would probably have to explain to them what that is. And endpoints, you would probably just say mobile devices, desktops, laptops, you know, because they probably don't know what you mean by endpoints. So think about that going into these meetings, okay? What devices can connect to your network and how you ensure that they comply with your security policies. Also through the next generation firewall, you want to be able to control advanced malware through the proper handling of applications. That's like the most important thing that you want to pay attention to when going in with next generation security solutions. We have to be very persistent in analyzing and tracking and controlling the use of applications. Now, if you read through the book, they're going to give you examples of big hacks that happen. I think one of them was Target that they explained and how Target was hacked through their, I think it was their POS system. They got hacked through that and they stole a bunch of the users and the employees data through that. Cross-site scripting is something that you also want to keep on your radar because this allows attackers to send out malicious links to users. And this can open up the door for attackers to packet sniff and take over social networking accounts. And this is another thing that you guys should pay attention to as security professionals and um, really talk about to your IT team and how to carry this out. You want to provide security awareness, like I do, okay? You want to have some type of training, some type of awareness presentation so that users can go through and know what and what not to do when they are faced with a critical security issue. They did this seriously in the government. Before you got in, you did security, IT security training. Sometimes they call these SOPs. All right, so moving on to what else we want to look for in the next generation firewall. You want to be able to actively test unknown files. Now, remember in the last video, the last episode, I was going to get more into sandbox, what a sandbox is and how it works. Well, this is where we talk about it. You can use a sandbox to analyze malware and take samples to be able to assign signatures to it and fixes and stuff like that. Well, we kind of want the firewall, the next generation firewall to do this automatically. It's gonna give us details on how it behaves on the network, what it's doing, what it's changing, um, what the overall goal is. We want this next generation firewall to grab any malware that we don't know about, any zero day, which is a zero day basically, and grab it, analyze it, and quickly let us know as IT professionals how to go about remediating this. And this just kind of makes our job easier. We want things to be evolved and quick acting because that makes it easier for us to 
inform the users so it doesn't the malware doesn't keep spreading on the network and infecting anything and making our lives and our jobs harder and then the cleanup process a lot longer we don't want no data stolen we don't have to go into the process of recovering any data that was stolen or losing employees because they've been hacked like we don't want to have to go through that so we want the firewall to be so strong to the point where applications like we said before they can be designed out the gate to be able to evade firewall protocols and security as a security professional if you wanted to investigate further and find out if any users are doing any unauthorized activity on the network you can track source destination and volumes of unknown traffic so you're basically doing the first step of the cyber attack life cycle inside the organization but like a lot of us are on this channel we are ethical hackers so we're not we're security professionals which aligns with ethical hacking white hat hacking we're not trying to find vulnerabilities or security gaps to exploit them we're finding them to secure them and patch them you would want to track source destination and volumes of unknown traffic so if a user is using an application that they have not approved to us and we see this traffic going in and out through the firewall or we're, in a, we're packet sniffing through Wireshark, you want to investigate that. You want to go and see where is this traffic coming from, why this user did not approve of the application. You want to gather all this information about this traffic and go and investigate. When we get into the tool Fireshark, which I know we will because y'all have been asking me about it, you can get a PCAP file from Wireshark. If you're seeing any unknown traffic or weird traffic in your PCAP file, um, you can send that to security vendors to analyze. You can send it to Wireshark to analyze uh, just to get further information on what this traffic is and how we can protect against it and investigate it. Lastly, for the next generation firewall, we also want the firewall to be able to find and identify infected hosts on the network. And we want them to do this by finding command and control traffic and automate traffic in correlation. And we want the firewall to keep, you know, going through the traffic and surfing through the traffic to see what it really is to be able to report back to us. For automatic tracking and correlation, we basically just want them to give us information back about everything that is going on so that us security professionals can analyze it update process and procedures we can implement new security solutions we can update our security awareness and training to better secure our organization we want them to give us any indicators of compromise so we basically want the firewall to do our jobs and to make our jobs easier since it is one of our first lines of defense on the network we want them to be able to do as much as possible before we have to step in and start taking action if it can't really rem remediate it right then and there we want the firewall to quarantine whatever is going on until we get a hold of it and notify us on the security team so that we can go ahead and investigate it and take it out we are the police. We are the police of the internet, okay? Malware is like serial killers. They're the <laughs> cyber criminals are like serial killers of the internet, of like network and data, okay? So that is it for chapter four. Comment down below if you learned anything new from this video and if you have any additional questions about this episode and what we discussed in it. And I wanna remind you guys, if you guys want to read up on the notes and just get a clear understanding of what I discussed in this episode, they are on my website and my blog post. It will be in the description box below. And I am posting these notes so you guys can study for interviews, to be more confident when you secure an actual job in security, to start a discussion with us in the digital empire as a community, and just to get, you know, 
just to get better and smarter in the field, you know? I will be dropping episode five tomorrow on chapter five. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and share and subscribe for more cybersecurity content. I will see you guys in the next episode.